Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Pallison, I, I'd like first to, I think, just make a little correction. I think you said Pennsylvania was number two in coal production. Yeah, you're number three. You're about 35 million tons behind us. Thank you, sir. Um, with that same, Pennsylvania has added tremendously over the years because they were a tremendous coal-producing state, and we appreciate all the energy you produced for us. Um, I'd like to go through a few things of what's going on. Since 2010, 610 coal power plants in 43 states have retired. That's almost 35% of the U.S. coal fleet. 69,000 megawatts of coal fire generating capacity have been retired. 2020, an additional 21,000 megawatts are expected to retire. That's 90,000 megawatts by the end of 2020. About 456 plants of 76,000 megawatts are attributed to the EPA regulation. During the bomb cyclone, the Department of Energy's own National, uh, National Energy Technology Lab, Nettle, found that the height of the peak of demand on January the 5th, 2018, had coal been removed, a 9 to 18 gigawatt shortfall would have developed. In early January, a winter storm popularly known as bomb cyclone, combined with unusually cold weather and causing extremely low temperatures, led to the unprecedented levels of natural gas demand as heating needs rose. As a result, in just a few days, gas prices near New York City went from less than $3 per million BTU to over $140 per million BTU, and similar pricing surges were experienced all along the East Coast. Everyone's been talking about cost. I uh, represent a state that has 18 uh, percent poverty level. We rank 46 in the nation. I don't know what all has happened and, and how they've talked and how you all evaluate out of this, and you're talking about all this is going to happen to rise if the president, uh, which I support very robustly, the Defense Production Act in 202C, and I would say, Mr. McIntyre, do you believe that's within his authority to do so? Within the, the authority of the secretary? The president. Of the president. Well, under the role... Secretary Perry, right. He basically directing Secretary Perry. Yes, sir. Under, under the roles assigned to the secretary by Congress, it is up to the Secretary of Energy to determine whether the conditions exist for the invocation of the directives so you under do believe, either. You do believe that the administration has the authority to take measures to preserve the power plants critical for national security? There's no question that the secretary does, and since the secretary reports to the president, stands to reason okay, that, that thank is you, so. sir. I know that's been your statement before, and I appreciate that. Let me tell you what's happened to states like West Virginia. In, 20, in 2009, the average price per kilowatt hour was 7.84 cents. 2017, 11.93%. 11, 11.93 cents, 12 cents. In 2009, someone living in the state of West Virginia on an 18% poverty level that we have, $88.16 was our average monthly bill. Now it's $126.10. So I don't know how you all think that you've kept these prices down and you're helping these poor people get through difficult times and you don't want to raise their prices anymore. How can you justify what you've already done to them? I, I, can't, I can't explain that. Uh, it comes no surprise to catch that uh, of how I believe about what we have and what we need. So if someone, one of you all, could define what you all define, as, uh, as basically base load power. What do you consider to be base load? I thought it was always 24 7 uninterruptible power. No way could be interrupted 24 7. You tell me what else does that besides nukes and coal? And this is only for 24 months, correct? The pre I mean, the order by Perry is 24 months? It's not, I mean, well, you're acting like it's going to be forever. It's only 24 months and it expires and has to be re, reauthorized. Is that correct? Yeah, there is a process. Yes, Senator, there is a process for it to be reauthorized. Months. So we're talking 24 months. Can anyone tell me how you all define base load power? Mr. Glick, do you want to start real quick? Sure. Base load power is generally uh, essentially power plants that are capable of operating all the time unless they're down for repair or something like that. Certainly coal and, 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 and is nuclear. Is there anything else besides coal and nuke that you consider to be some base load? Hydro, some hydro projects are also considered base load. Okay. Senator, good morning. And I uh, applaud you for your leadership, not only when you were governor of West Virginia, but on this issue. Uh, my definition of base load would add on top of hydro, natural gas. And the reason I say that is uh, your state, my state, Ohio, Texas, Colorado, if you looked at every new power plant built in this country 
during the last five years or talk to any utility CEO uh, from the EEI membership or merchant generator, yeah. uh, we are building a lot of gas plants. And these we're are not small death. gas we're, plants. We're tickled to death to have the gas capacity we have, which is tremendous in West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. But it can be interruptible. But so are those other sources. And let me pick up on that. Sure. During the polar vortex, I was chairman of the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission. I remember Governor Corbett calling me saying, hey, I'm noticing we're having something like a 22% forced outage rate. What's going on? We had nuclear plants. We had coal pits that were frozen. We had interruptible gas lines. Uh, we had industrial customers that didn't firm up their gas contracts. And so a, a market response to that, which has been a, a great, and it happened in New England, is the putting market rules that drove an outcome now. It's called capacity performance. So you better make sure during a heat spell or a cold spell that your assets going to perform or you're going to receive penalties by the grid operator. Well, I, think, I think that's a market construct to your pricing point. I, I mean, we're seeing historically low prices in PJM. I mean, but they're not reflected to the prices. In what well, let me wear my economic development hat. Uh -huh. Okay, an ethylene cracker coming to Beaver County, Pennsylvania, and you're in the epicenter of that, the West Virginia market with natural gas liquids. These natural gas liquids were predominantly dominated by two states, Texas and Louisiana. And now comes the ability. We could argue a little bit about pricing, but the Pennsylvania and, and West Virginia were not attractive places to build these facilities. These are $5 billion investments that are being made right now. And I think it speaks to the earlier point by the chair, chairman. Um, this is, this is the, the changes that are taking place. We're all for the changes taking place. My time is, I know I'm over time, my time is running out, but we're all for these changes from the standpoint of all energy policy. But to just throw two under the bus is basically taking us to where we have and for the next 24 months having the reliable power that we still are going to need. And if it says right here, I mean, uh, in fact, the Department of Energy's own uh, any uh, the Nettle, the Nettle Labs, uh, the high the peak demand January 5th, 2018, had coal been removed, 9 to 18 gigawatt shortfall would have developed. They're saying right now it's still crazy. We're not in that fully matured state to where we have everything's going to take the place of what we've been doing with coal and nuclear. But we're saying we're seeing plants, and these are basically the most uh, – efficient as far as climate efficient plants with all of the uh, pollution controls. We're talking about scrubbers, low NOx boilers, bag houses, mercury. These are the best of what we have. These are coming off because of market conditions right now and the demand, and we're trying to keep those for a 24-month period to stabilize the system and let the rest of the system mature. That's all we've asked for, and everybody's coming out of the woodwork thinking they're going to jack their prices up. West Virginia's been hit pretty hard. 